Hello and welcome to part two of the nuts and bolts of music. Today I'd like to talk more about harmony. Now you may remember in part one I decided there were six facets really of music which were melody, harmony, beat, rhythm, timbre and expression. Now you might think from that that I would be starting from melody but I've changed my mind because harmony is really the foundation of music. Even if no one is playing any harmony, that's where the tune would have grown from. So what is harmony? Well, we can define it as combining two or more notes together at the same time with a harmonious result. Now, when I was very small, we inherited a piano from my grandmother. And before I started lessons, I experimented with playing notes on that piano next door ones or notes that were further apart, two at a time. I learned so much from that. So today I'd like us to join in what you could call a, a note tasting, combining notes and deciding what we think of the combination, whether it's a good one or not. So let's go over to the piano now and start listening to some pairs of notes. Right, first of all, let's start with um, two notes next door to each other. If I press them down together, what do you think of them? Yes, a lot of people say that sounds like the sounds of a, a motor horn. And so it's not so much harmonious as a, a warning sound. Let's widen them again now. So we're going to leave a note blank in between the two. What do you think of that? Most people would say that's quite a pleasant, warm, friendly sound. And in fact, it's the sound that uh, I used to find came out of my humming top when I was using that. Right, let's widen it one more. What do you think of these two together? A lot of people say, well, it's OK, but it's not warm. It's quite a sort of cool sound, isn't it? Let's widen it one more again. What do you think of these two? Again, cool doesn't clash but neither is it warm and cuddly. Let's widen them again. What do you think of these two? Certainly I feel that those are quite harmonious and warm and friendly. Right, let's widen it one more. What do you think of these two? Most people react to that quite strongly. That's the one they say, yuck, don't like that. Now, Let's widen it one more. What do you think of these two? That is unobjectionable, isn't it? Um, basically, because it's the same note, just played at a different point on the keyboard. You'll see by looking at the keyboard that the notes look exactly the same. And so because we're playing the same note, but just at different ranges, they're not going to argue with each other at all. Let's just run through those pairs again, and this time we'll give them names so we've got something to talk about. If we play the bottom note on its own, that's known as unison. Now the next pair, these two, you'll see that we're spanning two keys. So we call that a second. Now let's move up to the next pair. And here we're spanning three keys. One, two, three. So we call that a third. Now the next pair, and you've probably cottoned on to this by now, we're spanning four notes, one, two, three, four, so we call that a fourth. The next pair spans five notes, one, two, three, four, five, so that's a fifth. The next pair, I won't even bother counting this time, that's a sixth. The next pair, the one that makes most people wince, is a seventh, and the final pair, well, you probably think that's going to be called an eighth, but there's a different word that's used for this in music. It covers eight notes, and of course there's a sea creature with eight tentacles called an octopus, and this gap on a keyboard or in any musical notation is called an octave. An octave. I find it interesting that in my lifetime, and that's less than a century, Musical tastes have changed enormously. When I was young, 
if we'd gone through those pairs of notes and asked various people which they thought were acceptable, they'd have been pretty much in agreement. And in fact, they probably would have said that the third and the sixth were the ones that were okay. But now, if I go through the same exercise with young people, they've been exposed to much more modern music and they find many more combinations of notes acceptable than I would have at their age. And so I'm going to base our exploration of music on what I might call the older type of music. I mean by that music up until the beginning of the 20th century. Just after that, Stravinsky started startling people with his new combinations of notes. And we'll look at those later on. But for now, we're going to stick with the old standards. Let's take a closer look at some of those pairs of notes that we saw just now. Let's start off with um, the fifth. The musical way of expressing that is to call it the interval of a fifth rather than the gap of a fifth. And if you remember, it's this pair of notes here. Now, in medieval monastic music, that sound, that combination of notes, was thought of as extremely pure and so very um, suitable for worshipping. And what used to happen was that the uh, monks would sing one line of music, perhaps something like this. And a second set of monks would sing in parallel, but five notes above what the original monks were singing. So you would get this effect. And that's known as organum. It's uh, something that sounds perhaps quite strange to our ears now. Sometimes they would do the same thing, but with the notes four apart, like this. Or sometimes they would just hold one note continually and sing a tune against it like this. Very different to our ears, but um, I'll put some links to um, that kind of music for you to listen to um, in the uh, spiel underneath this video for you. As time moved on, though, um, ears changed. People started to prefer different sounds. And the two that they really liked a great deal were the third, these two together, and the sixth, these two together. They give quite a nice, cozy sound, don't they? Now then, if a third, these two, are so good, what happens if we put another third on top? That gives what we call a chord. Let's listen to it again. It's got a very firm, settled sound, hasn't it? Now, if we were to add another note on top of that, would you say that that sounds unfinished, like it wants to go somewhere? Yes, it's amazing how different chords have different qualities. Let's go back to our heap of three again. I'm going to walk the heap up the keyboard now and as I play each one, I want you to listen carefully and decide whether you think it sounds happy or sad. If it doesn't sound either, don't worry. But a lot of people would say that you can you can hear the difference. Here's the first one. Is this happy or sad? I would say that's quite happy. If I just move the middle note a little bit, now that sounds sad, doesn't it? Move it back again. Happy. Right. Let's move up one. What do you think of these three? Are they happy or sad? I would say sad. If you're wondering, let me again move the middle note a little bit. That sounds happy, doesn't it? Come back again. Sounds sad. Next one. Is that happy or sad? Again, I would say that's a sad sounding one. Let's move up again. Happy or sad? Hopefully that sounds happy. If I move the middle, that sounds sad. Move it again, back where we started, sounds happy. Right, up to the next one. What about this? Now, funnily enough, most people will immediately say, ah, oh, that's happy. I don't know why it stands out as happy, but it does. Let's go up one more. What about this one? Yeah, most people would say, that's sad. Go one more. Hmm, 
It's neither, is it? It's just a bit weird. So we've got one weird chord there. And then finally move up one more again to this. And that's a happy one. It's the same as the one that we started with just further along the keyboard. So just to sum up again, I'll run up them and we'll give you my impression of happy or sad. So here we are, happy, sad, sad, happy, happy, sad, a bit odd, happy. Interestingly, those three happy chords are the ones that fall under the majority of um, melodies. And they're often referred to as the three chord trick, because if you learn those three chords on a guitar or a keyboard or any other instrument, you can busk your way around the world. And uh, just to prove that, I thought we'd just finish off by listening to a few pieces of music using those three chords as the harmony. The first one is Sentimental Journey. as the closing number for this particular session, Brahms Lullaby. enjoyed our first little look at harmony and uh, as I've said before if you've got any observations queries suggestions I'd be delighted to receive them um, again um, below the screen on this video you'll find details of how you can get in touch with me in the meantime I shall wish you goodbye and see you again next time bye for now <laughs>